All right, let's go. Class. All right, for everyone that's following and paying attention, so what page are we in the notes today? Yes. All right, there we go. So page 21, let's go ahead and, okay. Calculator, that's what I'm telling you. All this is gonna be calculator. Scatter plot. where do you think we're gonna do that at? In the calculator, right? No way. I know, right? So, see this scatter plot? It's a whole bunch of dots, right? And a linear regression is a line that tries to best fit all those dots. So it should be going in the same direction as those dots are. So that is a linear regression. Right, Chess? How you doing? How you doing back there? You all right? Hey. Hey. You all right? Good. So, linear regression. Next one. Exponential functions. Exponential. Where y equals b raised to the x or f of x, because these are both mean the same thing. If it's y equals or if it's f of x equals, a function or the y equals, they're both the same. So you're going to see them both on your assignment, on your homework. They mean the same thing. Okay? Now, b is going to be a positive constant other than 1. Okay? And it's going to be the symbol here messed up, so it's going to be greater than 0 but less than 1. Greater than 0, less than 1. And is any real number. Okay, so positive constant number. Now, and it can't be one. Now think about this. What is one squared? Okay, what is one to the third power? What's one to the fifth power? What's one to the tenth power? So, is that ever going to change? No, 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 it's not. So that's why my b value cannot be one. It cannot be one. Any other number but one. Can't be one. So one does not work. So, and x is any real number. So, I'm going to show you guys something super neat with the calculator right about meow. You guys ready? So, let's go to the scratch pad. Clear your scratch pad for me, please. Documents. And doc B. I'm clearing the scratch pad. On my scratch pad, so now on this one. So it says I am graphing f of x equals 2 raised to the x. Okay, f of x right here, here's a function. 2, now raised to. Raised to is this button over here, this caret. It is control, equal, and then the caret is right below that. It's a little arrow thing that goes, no, you don't hit control. Okay, you want the carrot. It's a little arrow pointing up. Now, do you see it? It's highlighted in red right here on my screen. Okay, carrot. And what's going to go right there on that carrot? X. X, very good. That means that is my exponent. That's what we do for exponents. So, yes, you have a button right here for square because square happens a lot. But this one right here is other than a square. Anything else but square, you would use this carrot. All right, do you guys all have this? Anyone not have this? I'm going to hit enter, so I'm graphing it. Everyone has this? All right, now this next part right here is going to be new. This is going to be new, and this is going to be something that you wish I would have taught you back when we were doing 7.1. So I'm going to menu table split screen menu table split screen. So what'd you write down on your paper for this? Menu table Split screen, okay? River, rock, blueberry hill. 
Swipe or no swiping? See what I did there? That was like the Dora thing. Okay, like Dora. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. Okay. So now that you see the table here, it already gives you X values, doesn't it? Yes, it gives you X values already there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrow up a little bit. And if you look at my notes, what X value should I see? I should start where? Negative three. Negative three. So on the calculator, I'm going to go look at that. And, it's, and so my X value is negative three. So is this fill this in for me already? So everything's filled in. All I have to do is write down these numbers. So what do you think you guys are going to do right now? <coughs> write down those numbers. It's almost like I said that, right? When we were doing 7.1 where we had to do all that. So 1, 2, 5, point two five, point five, one, two, four, eight. So we filled it in, right? We filled it in, right? So, and this last column is how are you going to write your answers? Okay, we're going to write my answers as coordinates. X comma Y. Now, let's say, for instance, I have a test question that looks like this next week. How do you have to write your answers? As a coordinate with the parentheses and everything. You guys are going to get this right, aren't you? Yeah. Thank you. So, negative 3, comma, 0.125. Negative 2, comma, 0.25. Negative 1, comma, 0.5. 0, comma, 1. 1, comma, 2. 2, comma, 4. 3, comma, 8. Is that easy? Yes. That's like super easy, isn't it? Yes. Super duper easy. It's almost like it's so easy I told you to write it down and everyone's looking at me awkwardly and didn't write it down because you thought it was so easy. All right, before I do this one, I'm going to pause here. All righty, class. Yes. There we go. All right, so we're getting back to the important stuff. Is this it right here? Uh, wrong one. Is that one? No, it's this one. Nope, not that one either. There we go. There we go. All right, so listen up. This is super important. This is going to be difficult. You need to write down a whole bunch of stuff for my process here. Okay, we're doing it on the calculator. So I need you actually paying attention. So before I go too far, I'm going to start by writing down my coordinates that are given here for my graph. Okay, my graph, we're going to end up doing a regressive formula for this. So let's start by listing all of these. But now my x values down here on the bottom where my years are. Yes, Dougie, go ahead. 
whenever you're doing these type of equations, you always want to change your years because you don't want to use 1,950. Your very first one right here that is on the axes, you're going to put that as zero. That's important. You're going to change that one to zero. Now, after zero, what do you think 1960 would be? Nope. Ten. Why is it 10? It's 10 years, right? Okay, there we go. That's why. It's 10 years. They're 10 years apart. So this is going to be 10. Next one is going to be? All right, and so on, all the way down. So what I'm going to do before I get too far into this is I am going to write the coordinates down because some people are trying not to fall asleep on me right now. Okay, I see you there. You need to go get some water? You good? Okay, so let's write down the coordinates. So my first one at 1950 is going to be 0, comma. What is the y value at 1950? 2.6. How about 2.6? Right? What do you think it is at 10? 3. 3. Uh, 20. What do you think it is at 20? 3.7, very good. Okay, 30. 4.5. 30. Oh, wait, four, I'm sorry, 40. That's going to be what? Yep, 5.3. Uh, I'm going to change this because it didn't look too pretty. Next one is 50. What do you think 50 is going to be? 6.1. 60. 6.9. And 70. What is it? 7.5. Where do you think all these numbers are coming from? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right okay i i will tell them myself right now when i was doing this the first class on monday i was over here and i was writing them in because my fat head was blocking the projector i could not see these numbers so i was guessing at them over here so yeah all right you guys wrote those down right all right, so now, now it's going to be all calculated from here. So it says the graph shows world population for seven selected years uh, from 1950 to 2020. One bar graph, other scatter plot. So next page, we're going to find this. So we're going to calculate graphing calculation using linear and exponential. Linear y equals ax plus b and exponential y equals a b raised to the x okay calculator so now this one's going to be a different method so i'm going to clear this one out i'm not going to use this one though so this is how you have to do this so you're writing down notes you ready home I know you all writing this down, right? Okay, yeah. home. And then I'm going to do new document. Wait, hold on. I clicked too fast there. New document. And I want list and spreadsheet. And then list and spreadsheet. So whenever we do regressions, it's going to have to be in the list and spreadsheets. We're going to actually have a bunch of these later on. Now, this first column was my X values. What, what were my X values called? What did it, X values represent? Years. Very good. I'm going to type that in. What did my Y value represent? 
population. Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Now, from here, these are where my x values are going to go. So I'm going to add all my x values. What? You wrote them all down. Oh, the enter's not working? Huh? It's not zero? What? Oh. So if you notice, I had to enter this last one also. So I'm down into an empty box. If you don't get it down to an empty box here, it's not gonna it's not gonna accept that there's a 70 right here. Now, going back up. Now the Y values. The y values that went along with that was 2.6, 3, 3, 3.7, 4.5, 4.5, 5.3, 5.3, 6.1, 6.1, 6.9, 7.5, 7.6, 7.7, 7.8, 7.9, 7.10, 7.11, 7.12, 7.13, 7.14, 7.15, 7.
kind of, but why? Got careers? Yeah. Actually, I kind of do this for fun, but not with this calculator. Um, I, I, I do, um, I do scoring. Okay, it's called a rating system for people in chess. I do these calculations, kind of, It, but I do it differently. I do a different formulas, okay? So, I use Excel. Excel will calculate everything for you. My monthly bills, my household runs on an Excel spreadsheet. So, yeah. That, that's that's where this is. But on the calculator, it's there also. So, yes, that guy. Okay. That means you have to hit escape, escape, escape. I think it's two escape. So it goes back to the front, right? Where your data is. Now, is that is your square highlighted blue? No, it's not. Go Okay, go down arrow and then go back up. There he goes. Okay. All right. So now my X list was called the years. My Y list is population. Now, let me explain to you what these other things mean. Let me explain to you. So see this right here says save regression equation to F1. So that means in my function one, it's gonna be my linear that I'm doing right here because I'm gonna test both of them. So in my function one, it's gonna have that already in there for me. So you don't have to go retype this. You're gonna see it there, okay? So I'm gonna hit okay. And what it did, it actually gave me a whole bunch of information here. So my regression equation looks like this. Mx plus b. So my m, you guys recall, what does the m represent in these equations? Very good, that's my slope. So you're going to have this number for your m, because your calculator writes everything out for you. Okay, This is going to be for your m. Your B is going to be 2.375. Okay? You have that one. And R squared and R. Those are important. Those are called the correlation coefficients. That means how close is my line to touching all my dots? If that number right there is 1, that means that is 100%. It fits 100% of all those dots. It is touching all those dots exactly. That is a one. That is a perfect correlation. But closer to one is a good score. Further away from one is a bad score. So if it's 0.5, that's not a good correlation. 0 0.9, 0 0.8 is still good, but you know, 0.9 is always the best. So this is actually a pretty good correlation here. But I'm going to compare the correlations. Okay, I compare both of these here to my other line that I'm going to do. So I'm going to compare this to tell me which one is a better fit. What is a better regression fit? So you're going to look at both of those. All right. Now we're going to do this again. But this time, instead of actually, so if you notice, we started over here, right? I clicked on this and we did all this. Now you're gonna click the next box to the right. And we're gonna do it again, but we're gonna do another equation. So when we started with the notes, it said that we're gonna do a linear and we're gonna do an exponential. So when you click that box right there, we're gonna go through the same steps again, but this time we're doing exponential. So let's do that. So you clicked on the box. Same steps, same steps, menu, statistics, stat calculation, and now this one, it's going to be exponential. I know everyone's doing this right now because everyone's trying not to fall asleep. I see a whole bunch of droopy eyes. Yes, that guy. You didn't. Yeah, 
that's how we can do this. Okay. Because eventually we're going to have a bunch of different categories and then we're going to have All right, let's take a look now. So I have my exponential regression this time. Population, years. And now if you notice, save regression into F2. So now when I actually go to graph, I'm gonna have F2 and F1. I'm gonna show two different lines, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, try to see if I was catch you slipping. I didn't catch you. Good job. Good job. You ain't slipping. There we go. Hit OK. Now, here's my equation. AX raised to the B. So, I'm um, sorry, A times B raised to the X, sorry. So my A value's here, my B value's here, my R, my R squared is 0.98. My R value is 0.993. So I'm looking at both equations now. Now look at both R squared values. Which one has a better R squared value? The first one has a better R squared. I know you guys are writing that down because your R squared is gonna tell you. And let's look at my R values. Which one has a better R value? The linear, the first one, right? So that means that my first one is going to be the better equation. It's closer to one. You want it closer to one because if it's one, that means it fits it 100%. So we're looking for 100%. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna write this out. So my MX plus B, so 0 0.03. Seven four. So let's write it out. So it's going to be what? No, seven four, right? Yeah. X plus what was the B value? Yeah, what was it? Three, five, seven? Seven, seven. seven, five. There we go. Okay. So that is the better equation, isn't it? And I know it's a better equation because my R squared. What was my R squared value for this one? It was point. Nine, 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 nine what? Okay. And my R value was. 7, 6, what? 6, 6, 7? Yeah. Okay, like that, right? Okay, that's fine. All I need you guys to do is actually write those out. And so that tells me that is the better one. And so you know what the equation is and you know why it was. Does that make sense? Huh? Oh, we're going to do that here in a second. So that's going to be, we have our equation, right? We have our function, we have our equation. So now let's take a look at, I'm going to try and put a graph to this so I could answer part B. Now, right here, I'm going to put a graph. Document. Insert, what do you think I want to insert? Graph. A graph. 
So you guys are writing this down, right? What did I hit first? Document. And then what do you want to do? Insert a graph. Yes. No, it doesn't have to have anything highlighted. That's only when you're adding something to the table because you're going to import it, input it at that spot in the table. Sorry, there we go. So, I'm, so now uh, I got this here. Huh. You guys ready? So this is F3. I don't want it to say F3. What, where did I, where was my good function at? It was, here's F2. So I'm arrowing up and here's F1. Was it my linear one, F1? Yeah, so I'm gonna select that one. So I click on it and just hit enter. There we go. Now this calculator has a whole bunch of different ways to do this, huh? This calculator has a whole bunch of different ways of doing it. Now, did you did you did you click on F2 and did you hit enter? So tab go up. Yeah, there we go. So I am going to change my window. I'm going to show you how to do this. And I'm also going to show you another way how to do this afterwards. Menu, window, settings. Now, what was my smallest X value? What was the smallest X value? No. It was zero, right? On my graph, it was zero. What was my largest X value? Was it 70? There we go. What was my smallest y value? Zero. zero, so the graph went down to zero, right? And my largest y value? Eight. Yeah, let's say eight, that'll work. And I'm taking all this from this graph right here. I started zero, I went to 70. I started zero, went to 70, started zero, went up to eight. So my X min was zero, X max was 70, my Y min is zero, my Y man was eight, or my Y max is eight. Because you got F2, not F1. All right, are we okay? Are we okay? Now, I'm going to I want to find value on this line. So, I'm going to hit menu trace trace graph. Like I was trying to tell you, this is a very calculator heavy thing. So, once you get how to do it in the calculator, you could do it all the time. So, trace graph And if you notice, as soon as I hit trace graph, a ordered pair pops up down here in the bottom, doesn't it? Yes. So I could do this now. I could actually go look. If you notice, I am moving it to the right, so it's sliding up, and so my numbers are changing, aren't they? Trace graph, trace, yes. Menu, trace, trace graph. You already put a dot on it? Oh, it's fine. Yeah, don't worry about that dot. All right, so now let's go and look at the question now. The question says... 
how how well do the functions model the world in population 2000 okay what was the population in 2000 which one was 2000 here yeah 2000 is right here 6.1 so what is my x value i want to look at so it's going to be 50 right so on the calculator i'm going to find either i arrow over to where it says 50 or once i have that trace on i can just type the number 50 five zero and a little box pops up and it's going to be six point zero five three is that going to be is that close to 6.1 yeah it's pretty close to 6.1 isn't it it's not bad so is is it a good good representation because if i were to round this it would be 6.1 wouldn't it okay i will take that that would be a good one so for part b how well does it model world it pretty good so it's a good model. Okay, so for hours, we had 50 comma 6.05? Oh, yeah. Is that what it was? So that's pretty close. Yeah, so that answer is pretty close. to 6.1. All right, it's close to 6.1, so that's a good thing. And part C. Part C says by one projection world population is expected to reach 8 billion by 2026. Which function serves better model for this prediction? All right. So 8 billion, 2026. So let's try and figure out what year 2026 should be. Okay, so let's look at my graph. 2020 is what year here? 70. It's 70, right? So what year do you think 2026 would be? 70. Yes. Ah. So that's what I'm going to be looking for there. So I'm going to do the same thing I just did, but now this time instead of plugging in what year? I plugged in 50. This time I'm going to plug in 76. So I'm just going to type the number 76, a little box open so I could actually enter that, and then hit enter. So if you notice, it shifted my, my thing up a little bit, didn't it? It shifted it over a little bit so I could actually now see this. So let's see, it's 7.96. So it's 7.96. All right, so if I were to round that, would that, would that still be my eight? Yeah. So ours was, it was in 2026, we ended up getting 796 So this is close to 8. So it's a pretty good match because it's close to 8, isn't it? Okay. Now, do you guys feel pretty good about this now? Does this make pretty good sense here? It's just there's a whole lot of calculator, right? So do you know what's really good with this? Practicing with your calculator is going to make life easier, right? Home? Home. Go home. Okay, but that's where your weed's at at home. So you're going to go home and smoke more weed. Okay, so I know, right? You're going to sit there on the couch. Put on Teletubbies and, and just or what's what's the what's what's the kids show now that Coco Melon there it is 
Coco melon. You're gonna put on some Coco melon and you're gonna be gone. Okay. All right. So, don't forget like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification button and support my channel. Buy my merch.